Hey y'all, it's Tammy, a Southern woman. Finally, a Bible study at home, and we're leaving tomorrow. And I got the heater on, it's cold tonight. Um, yeah, we're leaving tomorrow to go St. Mary's, and Chris and I have been to town. Oh, so hard here, and um, wherever the last few weeks I'm just exhausted <laughs> and I, I was in the car today and, and me and him were going down the road and I said I am just so tired and he goes well we have worked really hard Tammy and I said I know um, and I said I'm gonna go home and take a nap and I didn't but I wanted to come on and do Bible study with y'all tonight I was reading in the Bible last night when I went to bed thinking about one of the verses that we've read. I think it was the last time we were on here. So I wanted to read a little scripture. I'm going to read a lot of scripture tonight um, in reference to this subject. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. We are going to be in Exodus tonight and I am in chapter 20 if you want to turn there. I know half the time I'm on here and half the time I'm not on here and you don't know when I'm going to be here. So um, I'm just happy to be here. How's that? Um, we're going down tomorrow with the girls and I'm excited about that. They haven't seen the house and I'm excited for them to get to see it. So I'm waiting for you guys to grab your Bible and turn over there. Stuff tonight. I hope it'll be interesting for you. Um, this is Exodus 20, and we are in, uh, we're still in the Ten Commandments. Now, one of these commandments stood out to me, and so therefore I studied a little bit uh, about it in the scripture, and that is, it just, you know, it's one of those things that you grow up and you hear, and you don't know whether to believe it or not, and it's hard to believe. It says, you shall, now, you shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. So he says he will visit the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate him. Now there's two, there's several key words here. One is, um, you know, he starts it out telling you not to serve other gods, that he's a jealous God. Then he turns around and tells you that he will visit the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. This is not the same, and a lot of times it's taken out of context. I remember when I was growing up, if something bad happened or we sinned, somebody might say that our sin. Okay? Now, um, sin is sin. But in this Bible, there are different punishments for sin. Now, a lot of us are just like, oh, a sin is a sin, and which a sin is sin, but there are different punishments. So, let me just say here, he is referencing those who hate him. Now, hate is a big word. Hate means a lot more than sinning um, just in general, all of the commandments, None of us could obey all of the commandments. None of us are perfect. None of us, uh, no matter what we do, no matter what we think. Um, just like we were talking the last time about the Lord's name in vain, and some want to say that saying oh, is <clears throat> sinful or even Lordy mercy. Or whatever it is uh, but can I say if you have a personal conviction 
and you feel like you cannot say, oh my God, that is your personal conviction. Taking the Lord's name in vain is not saying, oh my God, nor is it blasphemy, which I saw, and, I, and it's one of my good viewers that I see all the time, but she said it was blasphemy. That is not blasphemy, okay? If that's blasphemy, then you telling someone bless you when they sneeze could be just as big of a sin. Uh, in other words, none of us are perfect, no matter what we say, whether it's God bless you, whether it's oh my God, whether it's the GD word, they're still words and they are going to be used in different circumstances in different ways by different people. But it doesn't necessarily mean you hate God or you're intentionally sinning against God. Now, it is wrong to have a it's wrong to curse. Yes, I'm guilty. I do curse when I stow or if I break something or if I get scared enough, I might even curse. I mean, it's not right, but it is who I am, and I'm just being real. Now, does it make it right? Absolutely not. Does it mean it's holy? Absolutely not. It's purely flesh. But if you think that you have complete control over your flesh, that you have so much control over your flesh that you would never say the GD word, or you would never say, oh my God, or you would never say, Lord of mercy. I have plenty of commandments and laws in the Old Testament that you break on a daily basis anyway. I'm not trying to say it's okay to be bad. I'm just trying to let you see that you are not good. Okay? None of us are good. The Bible says, None are good, not one. Better, we have the Holy Spirit in us who helps guide us and direct us. We have the Bible to teach us what God would have us to do and how to live in God's will. But we still are in our flesh and we will fail. We do not, I don't want to fail on purpose and you shouldn't, deliberately do it but do not think for one minute that you have arrived and that you are because you are not none of us are so with this subject because it's very important to me because I've often wondered you know um, why God would punish children whose fathers or grandfathers or great-grandfathers hate God well the only thing I could say here is that because he's just and he's right and he's perfect and that is what he says he's going to do but turn around and look at the next thing and he says um, he shows but don't you just love the buts in the Bible? But showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. So he lets us know that yes, he will. They will have to pay the guilty price. They will have to take the punishment. But he also tells us that those who show their love and keep his commandments, he blesses. Not just to the third and fourth generation, but thousands and thousands, okay? So that's even better. So we have a choice. We have a choice on, are we going to hate our God? Are we going to turn from his ways and turn from his commandments? and choose the path that our children would be cursed or are we going to be blessed by gods by god not gods by god 
Now, and that's totally up to us. Now, with that, I'm going to stop right there. We're going to start reading just some scripture back up, okay? I love to read the scripture. I don't do it a whole lot on here, but I actually am in my bathroom, and I took my toilet paper, and I tagged what I want to read to y'all, okay? So the first one, let's see. I've got to, I've got to look at my little reference line right here. And I believe we are in Numbers, so we will be going to Numbers 14, 18, okay? And Numbers 14, 18 says, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, third and fourth generation. Second mention, same, uh, I guess you would call it a, um, well, it's the same verse. It's God telling you something more than once, okay? And when he says something more than once, it's a big deal. If he says it three times, it's even a bigger deal. He lets us know what's important to him in his word, okay? Argue with somebody who believes this or believes that, and you don't have a lot of scripture to back up, um, don't fuss about it. We're in here, and he repeats over and over and over real that's good stuff that's meat that's the part he wants you to grab a hold to and love and share and understand and obey and this is one of them the lord is steadfast love forgiving forgiving iniquity and transgression but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation. Now remember, this is the Old Testament, and remember the guilty are those who hate God. Right? All right, this is our next verse. It's in Deuteronomy. I say it wrong. My kids make fun of me. So y'all can just laugh too. It's chapter 4, verse 24. And it says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous He is a lot of people don't that he has that he's that he has anger. Does. I actually read those verses. I actually am comforted by the fact that I'm just. I'm comforted by the fact that he will repay people for what they deserve. Because not because I'm not forgiving, it, I feel like he's taking care of us. He's taking care of what he needs to take care of because he is just. And that makes me feel secure. Okay, now the next one is Deuteronomy, and I know I say it wrong. Let me find it. No, I've already done that one. The next one's Joshua twenty four nineteen. Let me find it. Joshua twenty four nineteen says. But Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods. Then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. that our God's a jealous God, and even if he's done them good, he'll turn and do them and do something opposite that when they are not 
if they're serving other gods and they're not and they and they turn on it. So uh, he lets them know that. Okay. Now our next verse is in the Psalms or Psalm, and it's Psalm doo -doo -doo, 79 8. Psalm 79 8. And it says. Okay, so they're asking him, they're okay, and on 79, not remember us, do not remember against us our former iniquities. Let your compassion come speedily to meet us, for we are brought very low. So here we see repentance. We see, um, and he even says, help us, O God of our salvation for the glory of your name deliver us and atone us for our sins for your name's sake so it's showing us here that they can repent they can ask for forgiveness they can go to god and say that they are sorry and that they love him and so that's that is a good thing now um then we have psalms 109 14 and it says, May the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. This is a psalm, a song, and he is calling out the iniquities of his enemies and telling God to um, remember the iniquities of these people, okay? Now, we are going to go to Isaiah. We are in Isaiah, and we are at 65, 6, okay? So we go to Isaiah, and it says, Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their lap both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together, says the Lord. And then I'll just go ahead and finish it. It says, because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted me on the hills, I will measure into their lap payment for their former deeds. So God's telling them right there. They've insulted him and they've made offerings I guess to other gods, I'm sure is what he's talking about. We let them know that they're going to repay, okay? So we can see here that God is a jealous God. This is one of the things we talked about uh, the last time we talked, and that is taking his name in vain. He says that they insulted him, um, and I would think that would be one of those occasions, okay, where they would be taking his name in vain, all right, let's see. Now, we are going to go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 32, 18. Let's see? And that is, You show steadfast love to thousands, but you repay the guilt of fathers to their children after them. O oh, great and mighty God, whose name is the Lord of hosts, great in counsel and mighty in deed, whose eyes are open to all the ways of the children of man, rewarding each one according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. Okay? And I had one more marked, and it's Nahum, Nahum I think is how you say it. And this one was, uh, just talks about God's wrath again. It says, the Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. And the Lord will by no means clear the guilty. Okay. So, um, and then I read this part at the bottom. 
But I'm going to read the part at the bottom because this is the subject we're on when he first gives us this commandment, which is in the Ten Command, part of the Ten Commandments. And it just says, A jealous God, God the Creator, is His creation indeed. Are functioning properly only when they give God the honor and worship that He deserves. God's jealousy is therefore also his, his creature's well-being. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children experience confirms that immoral behavior on the part of parents often results in suffering for their children and grandchildren. This is one of the grievous aspects of sin. That it harms others besides the sinner himself. But this general principle is qualified in two ways. First, it applies only to those who hate me. Example, to those who persist in unbelief as enemies of God. The cycle of sin and suffering can be broken through repentance. Second, the suffering comes to the third and the fourth generation while God shows to another group of people, namely to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. To the thousandth generation. Okay? So where you see all this wrath and anger, there's also a much more beautiful side but at least he gives us the choice instead of making us into robot okay because he's God he could have made us into robots and had us bow when he wanted us to bow and worship when he wanted us to that he made us our separate person gave us our own soul and our own being and it's up to us whether or not we choose his way. It's up to us whether or not we choose to believe in God, trust in God, love God, keep his commandments. And But I will say, just like I said in the beginning, never get to the point to where you feel like you can point the finger at somebody else. Because there's always something that we're going to be doing that is not perfect because none of us are perfect no not so just remember that remember that we have to see ourselves as who we really really are okay i remember a time when i was young and i would go to church and i would feel like i was deserved i felt like i deserved to be saved that i deserved um why would it God want to save me? Or like I was deserving of his mercy and grace. And now that I've gotten older and I see who God really is, I realize how undeserved I am. I can remember being young and thinking, why do they say that and what's the big deal? And I was saved, but I was unlearned and I didn't really know a lot. And um, the more you find out about God and the more you read about God and the more you study his word, the more you see yourself as who you really are, okay? And the more you see God as who he really is, high and lifted up, okay? And um, if you still... Um, you have to get to that point uh, to know that you do not deserve. You do not deserve it. No matter how good we think we are, we're never good enough. Okay? We could never be good enough. Okay? That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we needed him to come here and die for our sin. Um. I had a lot of people sign on and a lot of people sign off. That's what happens. All you got to do is get out the Bible and start reading the word and people drop like flies. They'll listen to you talk all day long and then let you chit chat and they'll even let you do a little cutesy Bible study.
But if you get out the Word of God and you start reading it, people and in my opinion, either they think God or they just don't want to hear the Word of God. And they can even be Christians, they can even be saved, but the Holy Spirit, they are quenching and they are more in their fleshly nature. And so therefore they do not want to be a part of listening to God's Word. I think I'm better than them. Absolutely not. I just know that God's word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And it shows. It shows when you start reading it and people start dropping. It's true. It's right. And it's 100%. He's 100% good. And um, what he says is true. And it's just one of those things that goes to show that what he says is true, you know. It doesn't make me sad. It doesn't make me feel bad. It doesn't make me not want to do my Bible study. It just makes me know what he says is real. The Word of God is real, and it's alive. And that's how you know it's real and alive. Um, I hope y'all are having a blessed week. I hope that um, even if I talk about the wrath of God, here. I love it. I love the fact that God could do the things he did for his people. I love he loves me enough to want me to be in a place around people who love him. I love the fact that our God is a jealous God, and I love the fact that he's real and alive, and I love the fact that he loves me so much that he would send his only son here to die for us as the perfect sacrifice that those lambs and those goats and those pigeons could have never done, or doves or whatever it is they used. They could have never, ever, ever paid the sin that Christ had to pay. And I love him for that. Um, I hope that y'all have a blessed day, night. I hope that uh, scripture has been a blessing to you. I hope the fact that your Father in heaven is just and is in control makes you feel as secure as it makes me feel. Let's say our prayers and pray for our traveling tomorrow. We will be pulling the boat. Y'all, I always get nervous when that boat is behind us. My husband is a good driver, but he gets so excited. The older he gets about everything, he's got a little bit of ADD in him uh, because he gets so excited that he makes a few mistakes sometimes when he's going somewhere in a hurry. So I pray that y'all would pray for him, that he would be calm and that he would get us down to Florida calmly with the boat behind us because it's a lot harder to turn and, you know, get over in the lanes when you've got a boat. Um, and I just every time we travel with the boat, I get nervous. That was one reason I was so glad we bought that trailer in Pensacola so we could leave that boat down there. Uh, but anyway, we're going to leave the boat when we get down there and pull it into the backyard and close the fence. And the dogs are going to love it. I'm so excited to take my dogs because they've never got to run in such a large yard. They're so they're going to love it. So anyway, we don't even have furniture down there. All we're going to have is our mattresses for like three or four days, but we don't care. We're going to paint and fix up the place and have fun. I went to Goodwill tonight and bought a lot of stuff, y'all. I went to Goodwill tonight and I got this big red thing that's gonna go on my dresser. Um, and I got some black and white things that can go in the kitchen and a couple of brown things that can go on my shelves in the in the um, living room. So um, yeah, I shop at Goodwill. I like to play, I like to look at the and they had some really cool old lamps in there that were really neat. But, um, okay, let's say our prayers. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you that it is sharper than a two-edged sword. We thank you for your Son, and we thank you for our salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time of year, with the birth of Christ, and our salvation, and we pray. I just pray, Lord, that you help each and every one of us that are here tonight and that listen to this Bible study. Um, know who we are. Help us see ourselves for who we are. Help us want to um, follow your commandments and love you more each and every day um, so that we can spread your word and share your love with others. Um, help those who watch this program and um, I pray that they don't take what I said in the beginning the wrong way because I know that each and every one of us are not perfect. And I just hope that none of us think that we are because you absolutely told us that we were not. Um, now, I know that we, um, your spirit that lives within us is perfect. And I know that Jesus Christ is perfect. And I know that the more we stay in your word, and the more that we live through the Spirit, then we can become more like Christ. But, the big but, we are in our flesh. Paul had a hard time in his flesh. As much zeal as he had for the gospel, I'm sure that many of us also have a hard time in our flesh as well. So help us, Lord. Help us be better Christians. Help us love people the way you love people. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night. And I'm going to go sit down with Chris and um, rest a minute. We're going to sleep well tonight, jump up in the morning, and go to our new house in Mar St. Mary's. I'm so excited. Um. I'm trying to think. I don't even know what all we're, we're going to paint. We're going to paint the main wall at the fireplace an accent color, the same color that's in the living room. We've already got a gallon of paint, so we just got to get, take it to Lowe's and have it shook up. And then we're going to paint a wall in the kitchen, and I've got to paint that big cabinet in the kitchen black. And we're going to paint the trim on the side of the panels the same color that we put on the wall, Okay. So, in a few days, I'll show y'all some pictures. Maybe I'll, it'll get quiet and settle down enough down there that I can do a Bible study in a couple of nights. And if not, y'all just keep me in your prayers. I love you, and I'll talk to you next time. This is Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it.